no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Those are the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Jesus tells us we can't love God and love mammon at the same time. Mammon just means money or material things, things of the flesh, things that our flesh desires, things that aren't of God. He says, if we love one, we, we will hate the other. So either we love God or we hate God. Either we love God or we love mammon. We can't serve two masters. Hate. What is hate? You know, I looked up hate in the dictionary. It says, hate means to dislike greatly. Greatly. Greatly dislike something or to have a great aversion to it. You're opposed to it. You abhor it. You detest it. Hate is the opposite of love. I'm asking the question today, can love exist if hate doesn't exist? Can you have peace without war? Can you have good without evil? Can you have light without darkness? Love without hate? Just some questions I want to talk about today. Greetings, friends and colleagues. Sean Elvis in today's video discussing the topic of hate. I want to read a, a verse from uh, the Old Testament book of Proverbs chapter 8 uh, verse 13 says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Did you get that? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way in the froward mouth do I hate. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. To hate. To hate what? Well, to hate evil, right? It's not just to hate in general, but specifically the Bible says if you want to fear the Lord, if you want to say that you're a God fearing person, you need to hate evil. Well, what is evil, right? It's not your version of evil, it's God's version of evil. You specifically need to hate what God says is evil, okay? If God says that statue over there, that wicked statue that everybody's bowing down to is evil, and you think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, you can't love God and love that statue over there. Because if you love that statue over there, you're going to hate God. That's what the Bible says. In other words, you cannot fear the Lord unless you hate evil. What God says is evil. So you could say that you know we're commanded to hate. To hate evil, right? So in today's video, you know, I'm discussing the biblical teaching of hatred. You know, because so many people in this generation, they're afraid to say anything hateful. They're afraid to uh, offend anybody, right? To rebuke anybody and say, hey, that's wrong. You should not do that. I hate that, right? You should hate that too. You know, because they, we don't want to offend anybody. We're in the, we're in the culture now of, of uh, thou shalt not offend, no hate speech, right? No, no hate speech means don't offend anybody, right? Well, the thing is, everybody believes in something different. You know, not everybody believes the same. Not everybody believes the Bible. Not everybody believes, uh, not everybody hates what God hates, okay? Because God gives us that free will to choose what we want to hate, what we want to love. God doesn't force us to love Him, <clears throat> you know? What well, one person loves, another person hates. For example, you know, uh, nowadays it's it's becoming accepted same-sex marriage. You know that that men with men, men loving other men, so-called, right? Not it's not real love. It's lust. It's the pride of the uh, of life and and the lust of the flesh. You know, women with women, two two people of the same sex loving each other. That God said that 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 relationship's only uh, designed for a man and a woman. 
it's only natural anyways <laughs> um, but I don't want to get off on that you know my point is the Bible doesn't tell us that it's wrong to hate but we're commanded to hate things that God tells us to hate there's only specific things that we should hate and sadly you know if you discuss with some people the teachings of the Bible especially God's commandment in the Old Testament a lot of the commandments right like there's commandments on uh, there's against adultery and, and you know the, some of the specific ones that really get people going are, are um, the gays you know the homosexuals and, and tattoos you know you tell somebody I hate tattoos and they say well what's wrong with tattoos man it's my body my choice no it's not your body our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit you, these, we, you didn't create your body it's not yours it's God's creation Bible says we are beautifully and wonderfully made. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari, would you? Why are you why are you going out and getting tattoos on your body? Hmm? The creation of God, which is so much greater than a Ferrari, right? And I'm just I'm just giving an example, but what I'm saying is, if you discuss with many people today, um, they'll say they hate the God of the Bible. They hate those com- some of the commandments in the Bible. Right, like you, you tell women nowadays, uh, you're supposed to submit to your husband. That's what the Bible says, and they say, "Oh, I hate that. I don't like that." Well, then you don't love God because you can't you can't say you love God and hate what God said is good at the same time, right? And or for example, you know, God destroyed the whole earth in a great flood, and people say, "Oh, well, God's a mean, evil God. He he's hateful." <laughs> And some people, you know, they differentiate between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. But the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He's, he's this, it's the same God. It's the same God. You know, so the Bible teaches us that the reason God uh, destroyed the earth in a great flood is because everybody was wicked. And God said, I hate this. I hate the creation I made. All these people are just hurting each other, they're, they're cheating on each other, they're lying to each other, killing each other. I'm going to destroy this and wipe it clean. Right? Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So, you know, the Bible does teach us that if we sin against our neighbor, then that's the kind of hate that is bad. But why? Because it's sin. You know, you can't just hate anybody without a cause. Let me let me illustrate this point. You know, when, uh, Jesus Christ Himself was hated by many. John fifteen verse twenty five says, "But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me." without a cause. This is Jesus Christ speaking, right? So the world hated Jesus Christ. Jesus is quoting from the Old Testament prophecy that the that the world would hate and kill Jesus for no reason. You know, you see, the key word here is without a cause. They hated Jesus without a cause. That means they didn't have a good reason to hate him. Right? You can't just go around hating things because you don't like it. Right? It has to be a sin. Yeah, it has to be something the Bible says that you ought to hate. So it doesn't say that it's wrong to hate. You know, even God hates. Romans chapter 9 verse 13 says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. So even God hates. But the main point is, and I apologize for this wind. It's really windy out here today. I hope it's not messing up too bad. I did pray that God would uh, slow this wind up so I could do this video. Anyways, my main point here is we need to hate sinful things. We need to hate things that God hates. You know, this sometimes can be hard because we grow up in a world that glorifies sin. And we can think that it's normal. You know, I think of all the children growing up nowadays who think, you know, homosexual relationships are okay. That's what they're teaching in the schools nowadays. Or, or, you know, people think it's okay to have multiple sex partners outside of marriage. You know, these are wicked things according to the Bible. But according to the world, they're accepted. And if you speak against these things, then they hate you for it, right? Because they don't love God. 
And remember, you can't serve two masters. Psalms 139 is a famous verse out of the Bible, a famous verse about hate. The Bible says in Psalms 139, verse 21, it says, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am I not grieved for those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. You know, the Bible talks about a perfect hatred. When I think of a perfect hatred, I think of that movie, A Time to Kill, with Samuel L. Jackson. Maybe you've, maybe you've seen the movie, maybe not. Um, but basically, it's a movie about um, a young girl who gets, who gets raped. Okay, and I don't want to go into the details of the movie, but... You know, basically, the, the father of, of, of this of this girl, this poor, this victim, you know, he does everything in his power to, to, to make sure these guys are brought to justice who did this wicked crime, this wicked sin, right? And he, and he gets to the point where he even takes justice into his own hands because he hates this sin so much, right? Perfect hatred. You know, I think that it was reasonable in that movie that he hated this so much. You know, when somebody does something that wicked that you're left with no choice but to hate them for it. But it's important to hate the things that God hates. Right? God hates rape. You know, rape every time in the Bible was punishable by death. I remember one time in the Old Testament I read about a story where... Um, they raped this this young girl, and uh, the Israelites were so mad, they went out and they destroyed that whole, not only the guy who raped them, but they destroyed his whole family. Because they hate that which was God hates. So, friends, in this video, you know, I'm not going to explain everything that God hates. That's not the point of this message. What my point is, is to point out that, you know, there is a time to hate. And there are things that God hates, and we need to hate those things that God tells us to hate as well because they're bad they're evil and if we don't hate those things we might fall into the sin of doing those things and become an enemy of God and have God's wrath abiding upon us it'll destroy our own minds it'll it'll destroy our families our society and ultimately it'll destroy our whole world so you know I just I just want you want to get you to think today of what are some things that you hate and are, are those things that you hate in line with what God hates, what he told us to hate in the Bible? Can you prove from the Bible that God hates those things too? And we should definitely pray to God and ask him to show us things that we need to hate, that we aren't hating right now, that we need to hate. Say, God, open my eyes. We need to make sure today we figure out what is evil, what is wicked, what God hates, and make sure we're doing that. You know, the Bible says that, or I've heard it said that the Bible is our basic instruction before leaving earth. So, you know, you can save yourself a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, and not just yourself, but your friends, your family, and everybody around you, your neighbors. If you just learn the commandments of the Bible, learn to hate the things that God tells us to hate. So I don't want this video to go on too long. I know um, it's a beautiful day out here, um, but I want to close with this. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 says, you know, and this shows us seven things that God hates. You know, and as I read this list, I want you to examine, examine your own heart. You know, don't think about somebody else doing these things. Just examine yourself and let God show you what you need to get right. Bible says, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises the wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Anyways, that's my video for the day, guys. The Bible talks about hate. And, um, and we need to hate evil. We need to hate wickedness and make sure that 
we hate the things that God hates, and it's not just a hatred based on our own opinions. Um, what else did I want to say? There's something else I wanted to say, and I forgot. Uh, anyways, I'll catch you on the next video. Um, thank you for listening, and God bless you. And as always, I'm going to give God the last word. You guys have a great day. Um, I'll be reading from the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 14. The Bible says, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while there is yet other is great far off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunhill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen.